Tennessee Life is sponsored by Mid South Sewing and Fabric has what you need for your creative adventure. If it's sewing, embroidery, or vinyl projects you need for a home business, Etsy, Pinterest, and your family, we have it. Mid South Sewing sells Brothers Sewing and Embroidery Machines and the latest Scan and Cut Crafting Machine. Mid South Sewing and Fabric in the Gallery Shopping Center. Tennessee Life is also brought to you by The Flower Pot. For over 100 years, offering flowers and same-day delivery with two convenient Knoxville locations, KnoxvilleFlowerPot.com. And by viewers like you. Thank you. Coming up on this edition of Tennessee Life, the homegrown talents of Emmy Sunshine. Emmy's music has already taken her from Madisonville to the Grand Ole Opry with her family by her side. When I first started out, my mom was a nurse. My dad was a sound engineer. I told my mom that I want to go out on a tour. I want to go play. I want to, I want to do this for the rest of my life. And she said, OK, let's go. We've been going ever since. A beautiful part of ancient Asian culture comes to Knoxville. Learn about the artistry behind the Dragon Lights Chinese Lantern Festival. We like to share about our culture. What surprised me most is that when they just have seen something different and interesting, and it's enjoyable to see their surprise look. And it's so great to share good things to the people here. From Tennessee made products to special places that'll spark a memory. This grandmother and granddaughter hope their coasters do more than just give you a place to put your drink. I think the reason people like my coaster is because it is small. A lot of people just buy one. They want one coaster. I think a lot of people just want to put it in a stand and put it up because it's pretty. I like to feel like it is just a small piece of history. Those stories next on Tennessee Life. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Tennessee Life. I'm Vicki Lawson. From the time she was five years old, Emmy Sunshine knew she was meant to make music. She started on small stages in her hometown of Madisonville, but has since played her way into the spotlight of the Grand Ole Opry, all with her family by her side. start off by you telling me where you grew up and a little bit about your home. I grew up in a little town called Madisonville, Tennessee. My house has always revolved around music and my great grandmothers, they would sing a lot. Uh, they were part of a group called the Perfect Joy and they went around singing gospel music everywhere. They were just big inspirations for me. My dad was a singer also, my mom was a writer. I guess all that creativity just kind of uh, came to me and made me the person that I am today. Tell me some of your earliest memories of playing an instrument or singing. So I started uh, really becoming very serious about singing when I was around five years old. I lost my grandmother at a very young age and uh, she was an inspiration to me and so was my great grandmother. I guess that I really wanted to um, keep their inspiration alive and keep their music alive also. And I wrote my first song called My Time to Fly. After that, I started playing ukulele when I was seven years old because my mom told me you need to start playing an instrument if you're going to sing. I took a few lessons and uh, my instructor said, well, you're going to have to take a lot of practice before you're able to uh, sing and play at the same time. So I went home and I started practicing every day. It was, uh, I think it was two or three days after that I went back and uh, I was able to play and sing. I guess I was just really inspired to do that because well, the music that I listened to around the house. It was a lot of uh, Buddy Miller, Julie Miller, Johnny Cash, June Carter, Loretta Lynn, and so on. That inspiration from other artists is a big part of me. At what point did you or your parents realize that your talent deserved to be on a stage? I guess I've just been singing for so long. They, they, they knew that I was able to sing because at an early age, even when I was a baby, I would harmonize with my grandmothers. Uh, at least that's what they tell me. <laughs> I guess that I was around seven, even earlier than that really, and I would sing in the choir with my grandmothers. I was singing ever since. I mean, it just uh, was a normal thing for me to do. I started playing with my band. I made a band when I was very small. We would travel to churches and festivals, and we would just keep playing and uh, 
I guess then we really knew this is something I want to do for the rest of my life. And when I was nine years old, I had a video go viral on Facebook, and it uh, really just kind of uh, kick-started my career. Ever since then, I've been singing and playing and doing all the things that I love to do. Who are some of your biggest musical influences? June Carter. I love June. She was an inspiration to me uh, right off the bat, really, because when I first started out, I really, wouldn't really talk very much. I didn't really like to talk much on stage, but I loved to sing. So I started listening to June. It really kind of helped me come out of my shell on stage, and I kind of adapted that sense of humor on stage. And uh, Johnny Cash, of course. I love the music, and I love the stories, and I love all of that. So uh, Johnny was one of my favorites also. And last but not least, Loretta Lynn. I got to meet her at a show. I was opening up for her. And uh, she was one of the kindest, sweetest people that you ever met. I actually got to sing one of her songs, one of my favorite songs, You Ain't Woman Enough to Take My Man. I got to sing that one with her, and that was amazing. It was a once-in-a-lifetime experience. I understand your whole family is involved in making music with you. Absolutely. Tell me about that. My dad, he has been in music for a very long time, even with my grandmothers before. I guess that when I came along, uh, he wanted to teach me. I guess I've just been doing that with him for a while also. Um, my, my brother, um, he played drums before. Now he's playing mandolin, and he sings a little bit too. I guess that music has always revolved around everybody in my family. I don't really know how to explain it any better. My mom, she was a writer way before. She didn't really uh, have lots of people who uh, played in her family, but she loved to write, and she would write with one of her best friends. She would play, and she would uh, she could play a little bit of guitar, and. Uh, she would uh, sing enough to be able to write, but she let it go for a little while until I came along and uh, we've been writing together ever since. My family is full of people who love to play. They all quit their jobs. They all came with me and uh, just helped me pursue my dream. I'm absolutely thankful for what I have and uh, my family also. They, they help me every single day. And when I first started out, my mom was a nurse. My dad was a sound engineer. And uh, I told my mom that I want to go out on a tour. I want to go play. I want to, I want to do this for the rest of my life. And she said, okay, let's go. And uh, we've been going ever since. What are some of your favorite career highlights? Some of the places you've been or some of the people you've met? Probably getting to play at the Grand Ole Opry, of course. Playing at the Ryman Auditorium. I wanted to play there for a very long time because, well, it's such a sacred place that I absolutely love. Also. Um, I guess getting to open up for Willie Nelson was a fun experience also. That was uh, in Vegas, and uh, we had a lot of fun there. Has anyone that you look up to given you good advice along the way that has really been helpful? Well, this wasn't really an advice, but it always uh, stuck with me also. Loretta, she was talking to my mama, and my mama was so nervous getting to meet her. She said uh, to my mom, your little girl, she can sing. And um, my mama said, I know, I know she can. She said, uh, no, she can sing. And getting to hear her say that, it just kind of uh, was really big for me because I'm, being able to hear her say that, that was just an absolutely beautiful moment. You get to travel all over the country now. But tell me what it's like to perform on a stage in your own home state. It's pretty great because it's like having family with you. It's like being uh, in your living room just, uh, just playing and uh, singing with your family. We would love for you to share a song with us. And can you tell us a little bit about the song that you're going to share with us? This is a song called 90 Miles that I wrote for my friend Will, who has autism. This song is for you, Will. I'm crazy, is there something wrong with me? Well, I don't want to be angry. I ain't trying to be. Oh, my heart's racing 90 miles down the street. Oh, I'm sitting still. But everything's moving but my feet. I'm sitting in your classroom. I'm in your pew at church. You think my mama ought to spank me? A little discipline might work. Will you see me in the grocery with my head between 
my knees Tell me, do you think I'm crazy? Is there something wrong with me? Oh, I'm sitting still But everything's moving by my feet Oh, oh I'm sitting still But everything's moving by my feet Oh, oh I'm sitting still classroom. I'm in your pew at church. You think my mom ought to spank me. A little discipline might work. Will you see me in the grocery with my head between my knees? Tell me, do you think I'm crazy? Is there something wrong with me? Tell me, do think I'm crazy. Is there something wrong with me? Emmy, thank you for sharing your Tennessee life with us and your beautiful Tennessee talent. Thank you so much. Later on Tennessee Life, an everyday item just might take you back to memories of your favorite childhood restaurant, store, or landmark. But next, artists from China light up the Tennessee night. China may be on the other side of the world, but that didn't stop these artists from coming to light up the Knoxville sky with the Dragon Lights Chinese Lantern Festival. We paid a visit to learn more about the meaning behind this ancient tradition. There's no boundary for culture. This kind of festival has been popular for about a thousand years. Yeah, at the very beginning, this festival is to pray for a fair weather, which was vital for agriculture in ancient China. And then people pray for the peaceful life and a very peaceful society, no wars. It becomes a tradition. So every year we would do that. And it's also kind of a good way to have a family reunion or friends reunion like this. Yeah, it's very important for, for us. And in China, we have this kind of every year. It's, it's an annual event. I think the pride is that the how, how they make this. Because they first make the frames, and then we have another group of people, they glue this fabric on it. That describes very easy, but it's not that easy to do it. Because we have different kinds of people that are responsible for different kind of jobs. You can see one item, there are different colors. They, they will do this just one by one, just by hand. And this part is the yellow, that part is blue or something. They need to do little by little. So it's very hard job there. Literally, they did in two weeks what typically they have a month to do. So they were working around the clock. They were working night and day. We learned that we were going to be displaying 42 lantern vignettes, which is the second largest in the country. Some of these lanterns came from different markets. So I know some of the lanterns came from Cary, North Carolina at the Cocoa Booth Amphitheater. Some came from Indianapolis. I believe some came over from Germany. I think the fact that we had a 17-acre footprint was pretty significant. They have created a magnificent entrance. There's a beautiful silk lantern that's our entrance. And then you walk through the tunnel, and they have lit the tunnel with uh, lanterns, small silk lanterns. And then when you come out of the tunnel, it's another beautiful lantern corridor. That is the entrance of the show. It is a walkthrough show. It's like walking through a garden, if you will. I walked around with my camera. I was taking all kinds of pictures because it, it really is, it's eye candy. Dragon is always a highlight in our every event. And the skills of the dragon 
were painted by our artists one by one, by hand. And actually the dragon is as long as about 40 meters. When I saw that, I said, wow, that's, that was in, impressive. We think that we are the kids of dragon. Yeah, that's the legend. The dragon, that's a combination of a lot of animals. The body of the dragon is from the snake. And the scales of the dragon come from the, the fish scale. Actually, the head of the dragon, the face, is from the horse. So that's a combination of different animals. So we created this and we think it is noble. We like to share about our culture in a bottle painting, which, uh, which the artist paints the images in the bottle. So actually all the images were backwards, actually. He needs to, he needs to paint. And another one is the sugar painting. The artist melts the sugar and they just pour the, the sugar by the spoon and make the Chinese zodiac signs. What surprised me most is that when they just have seen something uh, different and interesting and it's enjoyable to see their surprise look. And it's so great to share these uh, good things to the people here. This is our first year, so this is their first time to see those lanterns, those lights here. Some people even came to me and said, oh, I like, I like this to be an annual event, and I, I'd like you to come again, I mean, the, this festival here, after they have seen our handicrafts and after they have seen our performances on the stage. They liked it very much. We also met some uh, Chinese Americans here and they feel very, very nice. They can see something when they were kids and they can show their kids here about this tradition. I, I never imagined that I could, I could do this and uh, show our culture like this and uh, traveling with our lights to show our very special and Asian culture here. That's a surprise for me. Sometimes an everyday item can become a little piece of art. That's what the Set in Stone sisters hope you will see when you pick up one of their coasters. It's also a great opportunity for some family bonding. I think the reason people like my coaster is because it is small. A lot of people just buy one. They want one coaster. A lot of people just want to put it in a stand and put it up because it's pretty. I like to feel like it is just a small piece of history. But the reason I started doing coasters was I like using coasters and I found myself when I went to other cities and go to a gift shop, I went to the coaster section. I always look through them, whether it be birds, flowers, buildings. I love coasters which may sound silly, but that's why I started doing coasters because I use them. And I think you can have a piece of art on a coaster and you can still put your drink on it and you can enjoy the beauty of that coaster. I actually want people to enjoy it and use it. I want it to be functional and I want them to see it every day. And that's what people tell me they do. The way that I got started with coasters was probably 15 or 20 years ago. I saw a piece of tile with a picture on it and I thought, I can do that. So I actually took photographs, cut them up, put them on the tile and gave them as gifts. So then I started using a rubber stamp and coloring them with something that I think is still workable. I think people still have them. It's not the process I use today, because today I feel like I've perfected this over years. I've worked really hard at finding the right inks, the right colors, the right process, so that I have a really good product. But I loved the functionality of a coaster. Set in Stone Sisters was started by my two daughters in 2011. And they mainly focused on home decorations, garden pieces from concrete. They started this business, then decided to open up a booth at Turkey Creek Public Market. 
and I thought it's a booth for 10 by 10 so I'll put coasters in it because I knew how to do them because I've made coasters in the past just for family gifts so I said sure and then my daughter my oldest daughter saw a picture of downtown Knoxville old vintage and she said mom do you think maybe we could have some stamps made with pictures of old Knoxville you put those on coasters and we sell them so that's where it started and it has gone from there in that the coasters have been the biggest seller. So now my granddaughter and I work together doing the coasters and the magnets. My mom and my aunt started this because none of the women in my family can sit still for more than 30 seconds. So being able to do this with my family, do this with my grandmother, and specifically what we do, you know, Tennessee Heritage, Knoxville Heritage has made me feel more a part of Knoxville. You know, it's getting to talk to people about their history, you know, not just the greater Knoxville history, but what part they played in it, what part their family played in it. It's really made me feel like me and my family have become a part of it. I like to focus on Tennessee and especially Knoxville. They started out with just Knoxville. I love all the old buildings. I fell in love with the old pictures I saw. I've now have gone to Oak Ridge, Maryville, a little area around, but East Tennessee's my home and I love it. So I, we're sticking to Tennessee. When we choose our images, we try to put everything in a category. The way we categorize it is the most popular. So our most popular will be JFG, White Store, Sunsphere, Louis, Pizza Palace. All those are older businesses that I remember we'll say from the 50s, that have been here longer. A lot of them, of course, were here longer. And then we have other more obscure businesses that like Athletic House. It's not one of our most popular, but it's an ad from the Athletic House back in the 50s, once again. So what's great about doing the coasters and the history is the other day, we have a Weaver's Cafeteria sign coaster, and the owner's grandson came by and loved it and wanted to get some as gifts. These are the stories I like to hear. I really like our custom pieces. That is my favorite because those are the ones that I get to work with hands-on because they're generally decoupaged. They're pictures that people will send us of their family, of their pets, of the moment they got proposed to, of their first baby. It's really cool to be a part of that family moment, you know, and get to hear the stories. Like I'm, you know, buying these as a wedding favor for this person, or I'm getting this picture made of my first grandchild that I want to have put on a coaster, or, you know, I'm getting these made for my husband as a 25th year wedding anniversary because we had our first date here. It's, you know, those conversations that just pop up naturally. Kaz Walkers, Kaz Walkers is huge. Everybody who's anybody knew Kaz Walkers. He what I like about my coasters is people come up all the time, wherever we are, and they will tell me the history of this building that I have on this coaster. And it's something I didn't know. I mean, I'm still learning about these places. Or their grandfather started the business, and they want to get some to give to the grandmother. What a great Mother's Day gift this is gonna be. So I learned the history and I'm continuing to learn the history. It's been really interesting that a, a new restaurant will pop up and you know, me and my fiance and my friends will be like, oh, we have to go try it. And I'll walk up and I'll be like, this used to be the site of, and everybody's looking at me like I'm crazy. Like how on earth did you know that? And it's from, it's from doing this. So it's really cool. I think the images on a coaster specifically appeal to people my age who maybe can't afford fine art just yet, but are looking for cool pieces for around their first home or their apartment. I think to work with my granddaughter has been so special. She's learning the beauty of Knoxville and she now knows as much about these images, I think, as I do. If somebody asks a question, she can answer it. We work together almost every day, so we're very close, and I wouldn't take anything for this experience with her. I think it's really cool 
to be proud of where you're from, and I think a lot of people are very proud of where they're from here. I think Knoxville has such a unique vibe and such a unique history, and it's really cool geographically. You know, you're five minutes from downtown, you're five minutes from the mountains. So I think people really like where they are and plan on staying here a long time and like being a part of the history. I hope that people will have these for years because they're durable and I think it's a piece of art that they can have in their home for years. We hope you've enjoyed the history, culture, and music that helped make the Volunteer State a little more unique. I'm Vicki Lawson. I'll see you on the next Tennessee Live. Tennessee Life is sponsored by Mint South Sewing and Fabric has what you need for your creative adventure. If it's sewing, embroidery, or vinyl projects you need for a home business, Etsy, Pinterest, and your family, we have it. Mint South Sewing sells Brothers Sewing and Embroidery Machines and the latest Scan and Cut Crafting Machine. Mint South Sewing and Fabric in the Gallery Shopping Center. Tennessee Life is also brought to you by The Flower Pot. For over 100 years, offering flowers and same-day delivery with two convenient Knoxville locations, knoxvilleflowerpot.com. And by viewers like you. Thank you.